Welcome to Nomad PHP Lightning Talks. I'm Joe Ferguson. Nomad PHP Lightning Talks are 10 minute talks that gives a high level overview or an in depth look at a small portion of a PHP related topic. Lightning Talks are a great way for new speakers to build their speaking resume and for longtime speakers to test drive new talk ideas. If you'd like to give a 10 minute Lightning Talk, please email me, joe at nomadphp.com. Right now we have Jimmy Fersman, and his talk is called Less and Front End Tooling with PHP. Please make sure you visit Joined In, and after the talk, leave Jimmy some feedback. Jimmy, take it away. I'll make you presenter. Hello, my name is Jimmy Fersman. I am the founder and principal at Mercutio. We are going to talk tonight about front-end workflows for PHP developers. So Mercutio is a small shop based in Seattle, Washington, and we do mostly e-commerce clients, um, but a lot, of, uh, a lot of our work is on PHP platforms that include both PHP server-side applications and then front-end uh, CSS and JavaScript and uh, because we're a small shop we wear many many hats and we need to uh, come up with very standard ways that we could take our front-end work across uh, several different PHP platforms. So tonight we're going to talk about some of the conventions that we've come up with that allow us to work a little bit faster and more reliably when we're dealing with front-end topics. That's going to include package management, CSS pre-processing with tools like LESS and SAS. Task automation with uh, task runners like Grunt or Gulp. And then some of the drawbacks and limitations that we found as we've been developing this convention over the last year or so. So why a front-end workflow? Why would we need this? Why does that benefit us? Well, first of all, um, we need something that was flexible and reusable just like you would any other object-oriented module. You, wanna, you don't want to repeat yourself and you want to have a nice separation of concerns. So we've created this to help us uh, achieve that methodology. Since we are a small shop, our developers wear multiple hats. People don't work on only PHP projects or only front-end JavaScript or only testing. We kind of all have to be able to handle multiple roles and having this convention allows us to do so more reliably. It's much more predictable where we can find things in code and where we can find uh, bugs or where we need to make enhancements if we've got this standard way of working. Ultimately, we wanted to be able to speed up our iterations uh, in both dev and QA. Uh, we like the way that Laravel works with uh, Elixir and it's uh, automated task running on the front end. But we needed something that worked outside of Laravel as well because it's not the only framework that we work in. So we wanted to make sure we had a convention that would work on a Laravel project as well as something that um, could be a Zen project, WordPress or Expression Engine, Magento, on any of the platforms that we work in frequently. And really, uh, I want to point out that while this is tailored to PHP developers because we are a PHP shop, um, it's not a only for PHP uh, concept. This is really just the context or point of view that we come from when looking at these tools. Uh, the tool set choices themselves, though, do lend themselves naturally, more naturally to PHP developers than perhaps a Ruby or a Node developer. Um, well, I would take that back. I would say no developers should find this pretty, pretty natural, but uh, Ruby or, or Java, not so much as the way that we're doing this that uh, is very, very compatible with PHP uh, thinking and platforms. Uh, we organize the code in a way that is pretty uh, consumable for a PHP developer if you're working with any um, of the popular frameworks out there. Uh, and it's also really naturally flows with our uh, infrastructure, our build, and our deployment processes the way that uh, we might use uh, Composer for package management or um, a chef or a puffet to handle your deployments, etc. This all fits in nicely with that because it's what we do. So the first thing you'll notice when you try to get into 
uh, JavaScript uh, tool, front-end tooling, is that there are so many tools available. It's almost intimidating where to even start. And that's part of the reason that it took so long for us to jump into this is because it, it just, there were so many options and so many different things to to sort through. And on top of it, the JavaScript community is very passionate about their tools. And so there were champions in every corner. It, it took a while to just settle on the things that were right for us. The first thing we started with was NPM. It's a lot like Composer. It's for package management, your libraries, your dependencies. It works really well. Uh, each of the tools are published to the NPM repositories. Uh, and it's very, very natural to pick up if you've used Composer on your PHP projects. For instance, dependencies in NPM are very similar, if not completely equal to uh, requirements in, in Composer. Same thing with your required dev items. It's called a dev dependency in NPM. The whole thing is written in JSON uh, and it works exactly the same way. It uses semantic versioning. It should be not a, a grasp at all to go ahead and start using NPM if you've used, or used Composer before. So on one project that I have here, this is our package.json file, which is the version that, that's what NPM uses as uh, opposed to maybe your Composer JSON file. And you can see it's very, very similar. Then we came into uh, bundling our front end libraries, things that have that would uh, get run in the browser itself that maybe aren't tool set based or aren't um, running like the node packages. We need to have things like Bootstrap and jQuery that end up in the page, compiled and minified all the way down. And we looked at two tools originally. Uh, Bower is what we were working on a um, maybe about a year ago, and then we made the switch about nine months ago to a tool called Browserify. When we looked at Bower and tried it out on a few projects, it really was a redundant to NPM in that it was just another place to publish packages, but it actually turned out to be not that great at dependency management because it clones an entire repo whenever you download it, before it decides what files it needs for a dependency. So that didn't work as well for us. We moved over to Browserify for our bundling because it was able to take node-based tool, tools and bundle them together and you can bundle them together right in the browser so it goes out and gets anything that you need that's been that's been published and puts it right into your script tags in the browser it does use a similar format as npm which was nice for us because we didn't have to learn anything else uh, but it also worked with standalone JavaScript files. Even if something wasn't Browserify compatible yet, we could still include it in the project. So it turned out to be a pretty versatile tool for us. If you look here, I'm going to show an example of how we put Browserify into our JavaScript. So here is just a main JavaScript file for our Mercutio website, and we're able to use a require function to say, here, get me jQuery. And since jQuery has a Browserify version out there, it pulls it right in based on the name alone. And then right after that, you can see that there's another jQuery plugin here that we're using that isn't Browserify compatible right out the gate, but because we know the path of it uh, by convention, we can just include it. And Browserify will go, with, go ahead and load all of those things ahead of time and then put our custom JavaScript below that, minify all of it, and write it out into one file very powerful tool when you have to do, deal with many, many uh, JavaScript packages to make your front-end JavaScript work well. And then on the CSS side, we landed on a tool called Less. Less is a great preprocessor for CSS. Uh, we use it because it is a node-based tool. It's written in JavaScript, whereas SAS is written in Ruby. So for us being a PHP shop, it means that we don't have to deal with a Ruby dependency on any of our production servers. It is modular, it has reusable snippets. You can do variables in your CSS, so you can set values, and you can even calculate on those values. So it really extends the ability of CSS into much more, uh, much closer to a programming language where logic can be in place. It also has its code structure that matches the way you would see HTML, hierarchy. 
and it allows you then to um, add classes or target by IDs and child uh, HTML nodes in the same structure that you get out of your regular HTML document. There is no added dependencies for us, like I mentioned, because it is right there uh, in JavaScript. It's a node-based tool, so we can um, just run right along with the exact stack that we're already working on. And as an example of a less file, I've got some navigation styling that we use on our website. And you can see here that we target by ID, and then inside that ID, which is really a container element, we can then target by node type all of our HTML elements, and we're building a hierarchy there. And then you can also say all A elements that have a class of active. So it's got syntax that allows you to do this uh, combined rule sets, very, very flexible that way. And it will, of course, uh, allow for these, uh, this reuse of, of code if we want to include one class in another. So those mix-ins are very powerful as well. And then in order to pull all this together, we use Grunt. And Grunt is really just a task runner, but it's very, very easy to use. So it takes all of the little steps that we had to uh, pull in all of our tools, and it runs through uh, each, each step in the file that we've configured, and it allows us to automate the whole workflow end to end. So we, could, uh, we choose Grunt over a tool called Gulp because we do configure it in JSON, which is uh, a little bit easier for a PHP developer to just jump right in. Gulp uses JavaScript functions, so you have to be fairly comfortable with JavaScript syntax to make that work. Um, you assemble actions into a queue, and you can trigger those tasks to kick off whenever we have an uh, event or uh, via the command line. Grunt has a couple plugins that will do things like watch your file folders so that whenever your JavaScript is saved or your CSS is saved, it will run through a task list. You can check syntax, enforce code style, and you can also aggregate or minify, or both, your CSS and JavaScript. And then there's even some plugins that allow your browser, or your browser window to uh, refresh as soon as it reaches the end of the task queue successfully. Then from a deployment standpoint, things became really easy for us to build out our and compile our front end code. So, of course, we do git clone and compose or install, just like you would on many other uh, PHP projects. But then for us, we do npm install, which brings our tool set, our front end tool set down from npm. And then grunt is installed in part of that tool set, so then we run a grunt deploy, which compiles and puts out all of the production ready uh, libraries in each location that it needs to be. And then it's time for beer. So deployment's very easy. Uh, it has been brought up that, of course, you could do all of this if you wanted in a single task runner. But we uh, tend to not take our, our grunt tools and, and install them globally. We actually uh, keep them as part of the tool set so we can step through each part of this deployment uh, and, and have it separated out to what is going to be the repository itself in the Git clone and then compose or install for your PHP code. And then we have the uh, tool set with NPM and the front end code handled with Grunt. So we have very well separated uh, steps to our deployment process. Drawbacks that we found is that NPM can be a little bit uh, scary when people unpublish their repos like we had a couple weeks ago. Uh, having a dependency economy is, is definitely something to consider uh, how willing you are to make that risk of having just code that you depend on and you require outside of your control. Uh, another way to deal with that, of course, is publishing some private repos and allowing or forking your uh, code that you depend on and keeping your own copy of everything so that you've got it uh, into perpetuity. CSS we found with, uh, with using less and or SAS that it's so modular that you often need to refactor it. You can find yourself pretty messy pretty quick. And then uh, it does add the dependency of Node to every machine when you are using a uh, convention like this. I've got some resources here that are going to be in the slides. If you've not dabbled in this front end, this, these front end tools before, these are great places to start for Node, Browserify, Less, and Grunt.
I want to thank you for taking the time to listen. And of course, if you have questions, you can find me at my email address here, jimmy at gitrepuccio.com, Twitter at Jeff Webb, and then here's the link to the slides that you can find on my GitHub. So thank you very much, everyone. Awesome. Thanks for joining us for another Nomad PHP Lightning Talk. If you'd like to give a Lightning Talk, please email me, joe at nomadphp.com. Please make sure you visit Joined In and leave Jimmy some feedback.